All right, this is a video on leverage bits, and we're going to get a little bit into the physics. And this is specifically designed or aimed to explain why higher leverage bits are slower and shorter leverage bits are faster. Because this is one of those things I do get challenged on occasionally. Uh, I see in, in multiple Facebook groups with bit experts answering this question. Experts give this answer all the time about that that higher leverage bit is going to be faster. And, and that's 180 degrees, completely the wrong direction. It's absolutely a false statement. And, and I just want everybody to understand why it's a false statement because, because this is just physics. It, it, it works this way. Levers are very old, thousands of years old to be understood. It was written about by Archimedes in the first mathematics textbook 300 years before Christ. This is not my opinion. This is not new. This is high school level physics. So, during the signal phase of any leverage bit, and this is basically everything that happens before the curb chain comes tight. So this is while the bit is rotating about the mouthpiece. That's a first class lever. And the way we know is that the first class lever is positioned in this order. We have the effort arm, the fulcrum, and then the load arm. So if this were a seesaw, which is the classic example, we've got uh, some kid who's heavy on this side of the seesaw. We need a, another kid of equal weight to push down on this side to lift the heavy kid. Now here are the take home parts for this. If that leverage ratio is one to one, so the length of the effort arm and the length of the load arm are the same length, then we have a one to one ratio, which means we really have no mechanical advantage. All right. So if, if, if I have a hundred pound kid on the end of the seesaw, I need another hundred pound kid or a hundred pound force pushing down on this effort arm of the seesaw in order to lift that kid. A 90 pound kid sitting right here is up in the air. Okay, so there's not a mechanical advantage there really. Now let's look at what happens if we extend the arms and we change the ratios. Okay, now let's look at what happens if we extend our effort arm and we make ourselves a more powerful lever. One thing I, I didn't point out at first is this, with the one to one leverage ratio, the rotation is going to be identical. So that means whatever distance I push down, my load is going to travel the same distance. The end of the load arm will go the same distance. So I'm just marking that as X. So it's just a variable. It could be five feet. It could be seven feet. But if this moves five feet, this moves five feet. Okay. One to one leverage ratio. They're going to rotate the exact same distance. All right. Now let's give ourselves a longer lever arm. We got a little bit of a cheater pipe on here and now we have come out to twice the length of the load arm. Okay. Or the, the effort arm. I'm sorry. The load arm is still the same. What I have literally done here in terms of the mechanics and the physics is I have traded distance for that mechanical advantage. So now, if that still weighs 100 pounds, I can put a 50 pound force on here, but my 50 pound force is going to travel twice the distance that my load is going to travel. So if that was distance X, the amount I have to rotate is now 2X. If I go out even farther and I give myself a 3 to 1 mechanical advantage, now to lift the 100 pound weight, I only need 33 and a third pounds of force down on my lever, but my lever, my uh, effort arm is going to travel three times the distance as my load. So it's kind of like pulleys. If you stack up a bunch of pulleys, you can lift heavy weights without a little bit of force, but the amount of rope you're going to pull through the pulley is going to be way more than the distance you're going to lift the load. You're trading distance for mechanical advantage. That is literally what is going on here. So if I have a one-to-one -one leverage ratio, the distance I rotate my effort arm, the shank of the bit, is the exact same distance that the purchase of the bit or the port 
will rotate upward if they are the same distance. Two times longer shank than purchase or port ratio, I now have to rotate twice the distance to move it the same distance. And then if I get even bigger, three, four times, right? At four times, I could put 25 pounds on to lift a 100 pound weight, but I have to travel four times farther than that weight is gonna move. That's exactly and simply how levers work, how mechanical advantage is calculated and what it really means. You're trading distance for the mechanical advantage. Now let's look at it in terms of the bit and a little different way that might make a little more sense. Okay, now I've taken the same drawing and we're gonna we're gonna discuss exactly what the effect is if we're riding the horse. So the easiest way to isolate a single variable and see what it does it is to isolate it. So let's pretend like we have a robot riding the horse and they're going to pick the reins up and they're going to move at exactly the same rate, exactly the same distance every single time. It's a robot, so it's, it's going to do precisely the same thing every single time. If the reins are attached to a shank that is a one-to-one -one leverage ratio and we start here and they pull the, the robots on the saddle back there. They pull back on the shank, it's going to rotate the purchase forward or the port up or whatever that distance of X. Right, we're going to go, and this, this is, I did measure, so this is the same distance on each part of the drawing. So if it, if it travels five inches in a second, then this is also going to travel five inches in a second. Now we go to a little bit longer shank, what would still be a short shank in, in the world of bits, a two to one leverage ratio. Um, we're still going to pull five inches in one second, that's what the robot is going to do. But now, see the shank moved half as far. So we could, if we still had a 100 pound weight on there, we could put only 50 pounds on now and still move the weight. But we're only going to go half as far for the same exact effort. So the robot arm, same effort, same distance, same period of time, five inches, one second. It will only rotate the load half as far. Okay, and that is essentially the signal that your bit is giving to the horse. That rotation that happens above the mouthpiece is the signal. <clears throat> now if we go to a longer uh, shank, a three to one, once again, uh, we're only going to move a third of that total distance because we had the distance tripled. So the robot moves five inches in one second. <clears throat> now the shaded green area is as far as it rotates. So if I told you that for the same exact input into the machine, this higher leverage bit goes a third of the distance of the lower leverage bit, the higher leverage bit is, is slower because it only went a third of the distance. If we took off in two cars at, at a line and we said we're going to run for 10 seconds and then they're going to stop exactly where they are and one car went a quarter of a mile and the other car went a half of a mile, the one that went a half a mile was faster, right? It covered more distance in the same amount of time. Five seconds, five seconds, five seconds. The short shank covers more distance in the same amount of time. And and that, that trade of distance for more oomph is exactly what levers are about. And I want to be clear that, that this period of rotating the shank and rotating the purchase or the port, that is the signal of a bit. So this isn't putting 30 pounds of crunch. I know all you, you uh, Vaquero guys are, are big about it. it's not a leverage bit, it's a signal bit. Well, your signal is predominantly determined by how the cheek of that bit functions as a lever, and this is why. So this is all relating back to a post on uh, the two-rein bridle fade bridle phases Facebook group and uh, I think Brett had asked me this question and, and was I don't think he believes me but he was wanting me to explain my point of view this is the point of view so like a Las Cruces cheek tends to have a relatively short purchase and a relatively long shank so it's a higher leverage bit typically we, we could maybe find an oddball one here and there but a Las Cruces tends to be a higher leverage cheek 
which means it is slow. If you adjusted the curb chain for, for it to only go five inches and the curb chain on a, a shorter one like a Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara tends to have mouthpiece set a little lower, a little higher purchase, short shank, so it's a lower leverage bit. It rotates farther for the same five inch pull on the reins. It is faster. Lower leverage bits are faster. Higher leverage bits are slower. They have less signal to them. More of a penalty when we when the rotation stops and the chain comes tight and the head stall is tight, more actual poundage will be felt in the horse's mouth. But during the signal phase, none of that's occurring. A horse doesn't actually feel poundage in their mouth during the signal phase until the curb chain comes tight. What they do feel is how quickly that mouthpiece and that purchase rotate. Slower for a higher leverage cheek, faster for a lower leverage cheek. And again the one-to-one -one ratio that's that that is still a lever, it is still causing rotation, but there is no actual mechanical advantage. I think there was a comment made about a one-to-one -one ratio still has a high amount of leverage. It, 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 it has leverage in terms of rotational ability torque, but it does not have a mechanical advantage in terms of a multiplier of force. It's, it's, they're going to be the same. 10 pounds in, 10 pounds out. All right, I hope that clears that up and, and maybe uh, puts this baby to bed where, where those, those comments are correct ongoing.